I'm fascinated with Costco, and I'm going to tell you guys a quick story as to uh, what originally started my fascination uh, with this business was uh, I was reading a book uh, called Richer, Wiser, Happier uh, by a guy, William Green. Fantastic book. He basically has spent the last 25 years of his life, and all he does is he goes and he studies the best investors in the world. He talks to them about everything from uh, their process to their investments to their philosophy, uh, their psychology in certain times, uh, their asset allocation, all this different stuff. And one of the things that caught my attention in this book is that multiple people that he interviewed and he would ask them, what's in your personal portfolio? They basically had two stocks that made up a very high percentage of their portfolio. One was Berkshire Hathaway. Many of them just happen to be kind of Warren Buffett uh, and Charlie Munger disciples. They believe in value investing. They think that those guys do a great job. The second stock is Costco. And so I said, that's funny. I didn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have thought that Costco would be a major portion of some of these investors' portfolio. And so I started to dig deep into it. I recently published a podcast uh, with this guy, Alex Morris, from uh, The Science of Hitting, his research equity firm. Uh, and as I learned more and more about this business, I was blown away. This is one of the greatest businesses in the world. And the whole model behind what Costco does is they basically have you pay. There's two membership tiers. Those two membership tiers, I think one's like 60 bucks, one's like 120 bucks a year. And then they say everything else in the store, we're going to push the price down as much as we possibly can. We're going to drive the price of the goods in the store to cost. We're not going to sell it for any profit. We're simply going to drive it down to, to cost. And so if you look at their actual financial statement, it's basically take the number of members times the membership fee, and that's the profit the business makes. And then they everything else is break even. And so when you start looking at this thing, it's a pretty, pretty interesting business. It's a very big business. And so we went and we did a bunch of research. Joe found a entire deck that what is like 150 slides. Uh, on yeah, this, we're not uh, going to go through the, the whole thing. Th this Costco <laughs> breakdown. We are not going to go through the whole thing, but we're going to pull up a couple of slides and we're going to show you what Costco is doing and why this type of business ends up being so fascinating compared to those dollar store, dollar general. Because dollar store, dollar general basically doing geographic arbitrage. They're going into these areas. They're finding places with 20,000 or less people in a population that have lower income. They put a dollar store, dollar general. They know that there's no pressure from a Costco, Walmart, or Target. And then they sell the items at a higher price per unit than you would get at one of the larger kind of uh, bulk discount retailers. Costco has a very different model. They essentially go and they're looking for membership. If you're going to pay a membership to a store, you have to have a higher kind of affluency than somewhere that only has 20,000 people with lower income. So let's start with uh, one of the founders. Costco is uh, 110 million card holders and 61 million households. They got 810 stores, do $163 billion in revenue a year. And Sol Price uh, is one of the co-founders. He says, we make sure the merchandise we offer is top quality. We do not offer unpopular lines of goods, seconds or out of season stock. Our refund policy is that when customers bring something back, they get their money right up at the front register, no red tape. You can do very well in the retail business without spending a lot of money on advertising. And so their entire model is very similar to Amazon, which is just serve the customer. Give the customer what they want. They want speed, they want straightforwardness, and they want lowest price. And if you can do those three things, then you're gonna build a great business. And so when you look at the actual business model itself, there's a slide that we have that kind of shows the reinforcing nature of the business model between price uh, and the membership model. And so you basically start with low price. How do you get the prices as low as you possibly can? You then are gonna get all of your profit off the membership. You use that membership to drive sales, which gives you leverage to negotiate with suppliers to get low prices again. And so this kind of reinforcing model here is really fascinating. It says Costco's on a relentless path to generate value for its members. When we price goods, the old adage is for every dollar we save, we give 90 cents to the customer. But you have to start with that membership. You have to convince people it's worth paying us at 60 to 120 bucks a year in order to get low prices. But when you have a membership, you think I have to go use it because I'm just wasting money if I don't use it. So I go in, I drive sales. If I have lots of sales at my store, I then can go and have leverage over the supplier. The supplier gives me the lowest price because it is worth selling inside of my stores because of all the volume I do. And those low prices then allow me to keep members on a retention basis and also drive new membership. It's absolutely fascinating. Now, how exactly has this played out in terms of uh, the new ones that they continue to uh, do in, in, in new stores. So instead of closing the stores, when online retail has exploded and uh, all of the physical retail stores across the world are coming under pressure because of online and e-commerce, Costco continues to open more and more stores. You can see here that they just continue to keep stores 
but they also continue to open new ones. And so it's a fascinating, resilient business that has been able to withstand all of the pressure that comes from that online e-commerce. And so when I was talking with Alex Morris, uh, he, he had a really interesting point. He said, they don't sell really anything online. Like you, it's pretty hard to ship the really big things that they have, right? If you're gonna go in and you're gonna buy a big screen television, it's kind of a purchase that's difficult to do online. If you're gonna go in and you're gonna buy a whole pallet of stuff or, or you're gonna buy really big uh, kind of quantities, that makes shipping very difficult. But they've been resilient to that trend and been able to keep the stores and open the stores. So if we keep going here, we're gonna look at basically their membership fees. And the membership fees, in 2017, we're $2.9 billion in revenue. $2.9 billion straight basically to the bottom line, pure profit. And when you look at that, it's like this to me is the most uh, powerful statistic out of the whole thing. Yeah, what's even crazier is I saw that 25% uh, of U.S. households have a Costco card. 25% of U.S. households have, have a, a Costco card. card. Yeah. I mean, for 60 bucks, 120 bucks, if you can go and you can basically get everything at cost, why would you not do it, right? Yeah, if you're within an area that has a services at Costco, it's a no-brainer almost, right? Yeah, there's BJ's, there's a couple of others that yeah. are like copycats. But Sam's Club. Sa yeah. Sam's Club, but Costco is by far the uh, the winner. And so if we keep going and we, and we look at the groceries account for half of Costco's, this becomes fascinating because what it means is that people are coming in and they're buying things that you buy on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, right? You keep coming back for food things like that. Uh, and so when you start looking at these numbers, like it's easy to discount. This is not millions of dollars. That's billions, right? Sales by category for food alone is $27 billion. It's nuts when you think about that. And so then you add in uh, kind of fresh foods and, and sun dries, et cetera. You start getting up towards uh, kind of 80, $100 billion in sales just in food alone. And so Costco, some people don't think of Costco as a grocery store. They think of it more for kind of the warehouse section where you go in and you can buy all sorts of other items. But really half the sales come from grocery. There's a repeat purchase component to that. And then when you're in the store, there's almost this like uh, adventure right? You kind of feel like you're walking in and you're like, oh, wow, this is like a, a big place. You kind of walk around. It's not something that you just walk into like a bodega. You know exactly where you're going, grab something and leave. This is much more of a, a, of kind of, hey, let me so, so take they, an hour to go in. They do that on purpose. So what I was reading was that they intentionally do not have a uh, large real estate and they don't have warehouses to store all of this. So when you go into a Costco, you'll notice essentially it's all on, uh, it's all stacked like it just came off the truck basically, right? And that is their warehouse. That's where they sit everything. Uh, and so this is, there's some interesting numbers here that I saw earlier, which was comparing Costco's uh, operations. So their, their revenue per square foot and profit per square foot and per store versus Walmart and, and Target. So on a revenue per square foot basis, Costco brings in $1,176, Walmart brings in $431, and Target brings in $283. So almost three times as much revenue per square foot by not having a bunch of real estate space. Yeah. Well, and, and also you don't need, really, it's the warehouse is the shopping area, right? Yeah, exactly. W which is crazy. Well, and they intentionally don't have signs, right? So if you go in, you don't know where anything is <laughs> because they want you to walk all over the store. They want you to experience the whole thing. They do and stuff get like normal grocery store as well, right? Like milk and bread in the back. The things that are the most popular items that people are going to come in there for. I mean... I haven't been in Costco in a while, but they're probably selling like 18 gallon things of milk. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the number of SKUs, this to me is, uh, is one of the charts that shows the difference between the strategies, right? So Amazon obviously having 600,000 SKUs, it's an online store, it sells everything. Uh, you can go in, they've got very different kind of inventory management and, and warehouses and it's all delivery based for the most part. Walmart still, and, and this chart looks a little weird because Amazon's so much of an outlier, but Walmart has 120,000 SKUs. Costco has 4,000. So Costco actually makes more per, per square foot even though it has such a uh, smaller amount of SKUs and it's because of the real estate, it's because of uh, what they're doing and in, in, uh, uh, where they place the locations. And they really don't have that many stores compared to a Walmart either, right? Like that's another piece of it is they're very methodical and intentional about where they go. So it, it, it's uh, it's absolutely fascinating. Last chart that I wanna pull up is the uh, revenue per employee, uh, which to me, um, you can look at revenue per employee or profit per employee. Both of these two charts, I think, end up uh, being pretty interesting. I don't know if we have the actual charts, but uh, when you look at what they're doing here, 
Uh, there's this entire kind of metric around Costco's revenue per employee is 559,000. Uh, if you look at Amazon, it's only 314,000. So Amazon's revenue per employee is like 50% that of what Costco is. And then profit per employee, Costco is $12,000 of profit per employee. Amazon is only 5,000. So literally Costco's profit per employee is double that of Amazon. If you start to compare it to like a Walmart, Walmart is only $4,000 profit per employee, whereas Costco is 12,000. So Costco has three times as much profit per employee than Walmart. Very, very different strategy, but it ends up working and building this amazing business, which is why the best investors in the world, this is one of their largest holdings, is Costco, rather than being any of the other retailers. So you talked about the like kind of cheap items at cost. The most they mark up an item is 15%. And one of the things that I think is cool that actually I realized a lot of retailers really do is um, a loss leading product. So they actually lose money on their rotisserie chickens. Every single chicken that they sell. I see people in the YouTube comments talking about this. So go ahead, hit us yeah. with the rotisserie chicken. All right, so they lose about $40 million a year selling $5 rotisserie chickens. They sell 101 chickens a year. Um, and they sell only them at, 101 chickens, 101 million, oh, 101 million. <laughs> and they sell them at like two times the way they they used to. They they started like producing their own because they're losing so much money on them. But the whole idea of it is to get you in the store. Then you know your eye gazing a little bit. Your window, your window shopping. You're like, oh, I need some charcoal. Let me grab the bag or whatever it is. Uh, and it's really fascinating that people they they're willing to take a loss on an item just to get you in the store. And I, I realized as well, Sony, for example, they lose money on all their PS5s. Yeah, tell us this statistic. This was crazy. This is not in Costco. This is just Sony as a loss leader. Sony as a loss leader sold, uh, they sell the PS5, they sell it for like 500 bucks too, which apparently it should be more because they made a revenue leading, I think $10 billion last year. $10 billion off PS5s. Off, off every- Like uh, a top line revenue. Yeah, top line revenue. And they lose money on every sale for a PS5. <laughs> That's wild. Because they want to sell you the game, they want to sell you the accessories, yeah. and they yeah. want to get you- Well, you can't buy the controller, right? You need three controllers instead of just yeah. the one that comes with or two or whatever. You yeah, need the of headset, course. you need everything. Huh? <laughs> what? You, you would be I used the to guy. have the headset, yeah. You used to have the headset? Yeah. Well, no, I, I was an Xbox guy, let's be clear. <laughs> Is that better? I mean, when we were younger, I thought it was. I don't know what the deal is now. Yeah, well, you used to lose in every game. I mean, I, literally, John is better than you at every video game you've ever played together. I would argue against that. But let's go, <laughs> let's go back to Costco. I got a good stat here. The um, It so better what, be good. Well, two of them then for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case one of them misses. Um, all right, so Costco, we were talking about how they do everything in bulk. So I saw earlier that they're... Uh, they only lose 0.2% of their revenue every year to theft because things are really hard to steal, right? Versus that's 80% lower than someone like Walmart. And then the other stat that I thought was super interesting, we were talking about uh, minimum wages earlier and, and how how businesses treat their employees. The average Costco employee makes $22 an hour, $22 an hour and receives health benefits in a 401k. And the result of that is their turnover is only 5% versus the industry average of 59%. So they obviously save a ton of money on uh, on reducing employee turnover through high wages and 401ks and health insurance, et cetera. Costco is an amazing business. I do wonder if you had to pick moving forward, would you rather hold Costco stock or a Dollar Tree or Dollar General? Which one would you guys rather well, hold? So Costco, I just looked it up, is up 47,000% all time from 1990, from 1982. Uh, it IPO'd at like 80 cents. It's at four. We, we have it right here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, a PE ratio at 38, and it literally is sitting at 400 bucks today. Yeah. Pretty nuts. Now, if you look, though, if I remember correctly, if you go back to kind of, uh, you know, beginning of 2010s coming out of the uh, global financial crisis, I think it was only like 100 bucks. Right? So it's only 4 x which in crypto world, Bitcoin world is like very low compared to what people are used to. Yeah. In the stock market, if you can find something that's going to go up 400% over a decade, doing pretty good. Can we make Costco like a meme stock? A I, meme. Want, I want to see this like $4,000. I want to compete with Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> can you guys tell who the 25-year-old in the room is? <laughs> I'm not we, 25, but I'm down for that too. Can, can, we, can we make Costco a meme stock? Yeah. Can you imagine if people were just going into Costco and they were making like TikToks and stuff and walking around and like getting it, free samples and telling people like, hey, this is uh, this is the beauty of Costco. It, actually, it, let's let's play this game. If you were Costco's ownership, what would you do right now to try to position yourselves with the younger generation? If you own stock, your membership's free. 
So you could do that. That's definitely one. Uh, I don't know, but maybe it's under a certain age, right? If you're under the age yeah. of 25 and you own uh, at least one share, then well, you it's like get the AMC free, CEO. Yeah. He was like free popcorn. <laughs> if, you, if, if you're a shareholder, their you're stock the is much lower than a $400 stock course, that, yeah. uh, that that Costco has. One of the things I think that they should absolutely do is they should create an area that is just influencer heaven, right? Like all these kids who want to come in and make TikToks or do whatever, they have so many like props that are actually the goods they sell in the store. If they created a little section, they've got these big warehouses and they said, if you come here, we have a professional photographer and they will help you create content for the internet. And you did that in a couple of stores. And then you were able to figure out who are the kids in your local area who have massive social followings and you just help them create. It's one person that you put on payroll that you do. I think it would explode. What would you do in a Costco store to create content? No, no, no. I'm just saying they have so many, they have so many products. <laughs> like they try sell. free samples and like. <laughs> no, they, they sell all kinds of, uh, of goods. They have clothes. They have like, yeah. like all this different stuff, right? And if you had like a green screen, like, like you, you would have to think through how to do it. Yeah. But if you basically created a place where kids in a town that maybe don't have access to a great photographer, right? That they're doing it on their phones or whatever. And you just made it easier for them to create great content and you made it the cool place to go. Like, oh, if, if you're serious, you go to the Costco like influencer center. What will happen is they keep coming through. They're young. They have big online social followings. They'll talk about it. My guess is they'll tag Costco in the actual uh, thing. They'll shop. They'll bring their friends. Like, like it creates this whole flywheel and you go after a, a younger demographic. Surely they have somebody in their family or themselves like, ah, fine, I'll buy a couple stock, right? And they start talking about, and the next thing you know, like you could create it from a, a ground up standpoint, you could create an entire movement around Costco. You want them to have lines like getting into a club? <laughs> <laughs> for the for the influencer center? Yeah. Like come in, you only get 15 minutes, make an appointment, you get five shots and you gotta move out. <laughs> how, did, how did we talk about Costco for 15 minutes and not mention the hot dog and soda? For All right, tell us the hot dog yeah. story. The hot dog story is pretty good. Oh, I mean, it's, it's not that crazy. I mean, it's a crazy story, but it's not that long of a story. They, they introduced it in 1985, I think it was. Yeah, a dollar fifty hot dog and soda, and the price hasn't changed since. Because at one point, a new CEO came in and yeah. went to Sol Price, uh, the founder, and said, "We're thinking about raising it twenty five cents from a dollar fifty to a dollar seventy five. And what did he say? I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he said, "I will kill you if you raise the price on the hot dog and soda." I mean, it's pretty great. Well, they were they were losing money, on, uh, and they probably still do lose money on that dollar fifty, right? So he was basically like, "Look, I think if we just raise it, you know, fifty cents, make it two dollars, mm. we we won't lose as much money and all this." And he's like, "I don't care." I've I've had a, a hot dog at Costco. If you awesome. Guys. Shout out to everyone on YouTube who's throwing us Costco ideas right now. I'm going to do my best to read a couple of these because I think these are uh, absolutely insane. So somebody said that uh, you could make memes in Costco. Somebody else said. Uh, that you should put angel wings on the walls for a Costco photo op. Uh, somebody said that Costco shopping videos are already trending on YouTube. Um, somebody said the boomers would get mad if TikTokers started showing up. Uh, the founder said he would kill the CEO. Yep. And then uh, the ultimate loss leader. Um, and you just start looking at, at it. What if they actually just made something free? Like, what if they just said, hey, if you come in here and you take a photo and you post it and you've got a certain number of followers, like you get free lunch, right? Or something like that. Or they literally started to say, what if uh, they allowed for people to come into the store and work out of there or create like coffee shops? I know they have like a cafeteria style like area um, yeah. that you can usually go into. But if they were able to kind of turn that also into like a, hey, do you want to go work at Costco? You'd have to figure out like some of the sounds and, and all that. What if they made the hot dog free, but they put it in the back? <laughs> so you have to walk through the whole store to get it. If Costco said you get the hot dog for free, but you have to come in here if you're under a certain age. And let's say that you have more than 500 followers on the Internet. You can come in it uh, and once a day get a free hot dog. Costco would rip. 